Yes, you read the title of this video correctly. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about why I'm selling my luxury items. At the current time of filming, I'm in Dubrovnik, which is in Croatia, AKA King's Landing, for those of you Game of Thrones fans out there. Now that I've been traveling for the past few weeks, I've obviously had to, and I've been forced to bring a smaller wardrobe and you know decide on which of my luxury items I wanna bring and a lot of things that have happened in the world as well as in my personal life and my changing thoughts have basically instigated me to have a real rethink of what I want in my life that extends into luxury goods. So now before any of you get ahead of yourselves and think, oh my God, what is happening to Mel? What's happening to the channel? Don't worry, I'm not obviously getting rid of all of my luxury items. Hello, luxury is still a big part of me, who I am. But for the most part, I have done a really big reevaluation of what is important in my life. So I've jotted everything down and I'm gonna be talking through with you today my thought process as to why I'm clearing out a lot of my luxury wardrobe, what exactly I'm selling, albeit as a side note, not on this YouTube channel because I'm not that kind of YouTuber that shills for stuff, okay? But I'll also be telling you at the same time some of the new buying rules that I will be adopting into my future luxury purchase process. I'm going to get straight into why I'm selling my luxury items. Now I've already alluded in the introduction just a bit earlier that I've really changed my thought processes and my priorities in life. I've actually looked on a longer term vision for what I want in my life and that obviously has involved recently anyway the desire to travel and see the world and also my focus to spend more time with friends and family and learning new skills and getting new experiences over just materialistic things and that's not to say that things aren't nice but of course things aren't the most important parts of life and i feel like especially in today's society we are seeing in culture this overabundant overindulgent uh, behaviors being pushed a lot and obviously luxury by nature is something that is quite extravagant that you don't need we are currently at a point in society where we're glorifying a lot of uh, decadent behaviors and i myself feel like i am party obviously by by buying a lot into luxury that kind of behavior which is why i've gone on quite the self-development journey as you probably have seen and that's where my life priorities have changed and things no longer just cut it anymore so that's something that has really really expedited shall we say my need to shift luxury because when i would look at my wardrobes when i was back home even just packing for this trip i just remember getting like a headache really going through all the stuff that i had there was just so much of it some things i didn't even really realize that I had because I've never really done a purge of my items like I've mentioned in previous videos I do not buy anything luxury or otherwise with the intent to sell I, not only does it provide a lot of admin a lot of headache potentially but also the safety element around you know a lot of people have talked about on YouTube as well uh, they the risks that come with selling online and the scams but of course, when it came to just the sheer quantity of stuff that I had, I realized, you know what? You cannot keep buying like this. For me to be able to leave and live this digital nomad journey, which I'm currently trying to go on, I need to be able to move quite fast with agility and also light, literally, without that much baggage on me. And I can't do that unless I've shifted some stuff. Now, reason number two follows in quite nicely from my shift in life priorities, because this reason is all about living a more minimal lifestyle. This is not just in terms of the amount of stuff that I have, but also having versatile, items that can basically transition from all seasons and are in color palettes that aren't going to be out of style. And by having a more minimal wardrobe, it means I'm able also to keep a track of what I actually have in my wardrobe. Like I've kind of alluded to, with having more stuff, you just simply, it's not possible for you to keep an eye on everything that you have or to remember everything that you have and therefore be able to wear it. I have a hard time finding or even remembering what I actually have. And, and that means I'm at a risk of just buying duplicates or buying something, forgetting it exists. And essentially that money just poof, goes into the ether. So it's a waste of money and time all round. 
Reason number three then is a nice follow on to that point around being more minimal. And that is around just making physical space and decluttering so that I actually get more room to do other things, you know, other than just having more walk-in wardrobes and storage space, because my house honestly feels like just every room is a wardrobe. It's not physically possible or feasible for me to wear a different outfit each day or to wear absolutely everything that I own in an equal amount of times. There are always items I gravitate more towards than others. And so for that reason, I may as well not have all of this extra stuff. Having the physical declutter, making room in my house for other items as well, it's gonna make my house feel more like a home. It's also gonna make me feel a lot better about the stuff that I actually am in possession of. Now on to reason number four, which I think is gonna be probably for many people the most important reason, and that is around freeing up extra funds. To put it quite simply, every item that I have that I don't really wear or that I've forgotten about and has gone into the ether in my wardrobe, it's just wasted money just sitting there depreciating as every day goes by. For me, although it's not like I'm selling because I just really, really need the money or anything like that, obviously money is nice, but it's not my main motivator where I don't buy to sell, like I've mentioned before. Obviously now that I'm becoming a digital nomad or traveling and priding myself more on experiences, those experiences more often than not cost money. Therefore by selling the luxury that I don't want anymore, I'm freeing up funds I can use to play with for any kind of reason, whether it's to do with buying something else to fit my wardrobe better, or whether that's to do with buying equipment so I can make better videos, or even towards my travel plans. And then the final reason as to why I'm selling my luxury items is that of me wanting to invest in more timeless classic items that will have longevity in my wardrobe. I'm talking about more classic items like coats or jackets or other handbags that will hopefully appreciate in value. It's rare that you will find items like that, but I think with those things, as well as um, fine jewelry or timepieces as well, I think those are quite good investments of sorts because when I have fewer items that are quality that I can pass down, it makes me also feel like my money is well spent. And so having more timeless items that I can you know, save towards and look forward towards buying as big milestones, I think will be the way forward for me. So now that I've covered off why I'm selling my luxury items, I'm sure a lot of you out there will want to know logically anyway, what exactly I'm selling. Like I said, I'm not using this particular video to shill to advertise items that I'm selling, but there are certain categories and specific items that I will be selling slash have sold, which I will just quickly summarize for you now. So the first one obviously is handbags. Handbags is what I love the most. And obviously handbags is probably the highest ticket items that I have a lot of at the moment. So in terms of handbags, I've actually sold two already and there's two on my list that I am in the process of selling. So the two that I've actually sold is number one, the DNG, uh, what's the word for it? The Magelica print clutch. It's like a wallet on chain. It's one that actually my mum bought me alongside a bunch of other dresses in that Magelica print. To be honest, it just looked like I blended into like an Italian kitchen because <laughs> the print is like a kitchen tile. It's beautiful, but with everything being kitchen tile print, it was a bit much. I've had that bag for a few years now and I really only wear it with those other DNG dresses. And to be honest, also in a separate point, DNG is not really a brand that I want to support for their various scandals, which I may cover another time. I found the fastening to be really fiddly as well. And I do have a lot of small bags that I wear a lot more. So it made sense to sell that DNG clutch. I did obviously ask my mum if it was okay for me to shift it. She didn't actually care, which I thought she would have cared a bit more. And then the other bag that I sold is one that I'm not entirely sure I've talked about on my channel or even put in like the handbag collections. I'm pretty sure I haven't because it's kind of like the lower tier designer and it's a Rebecca Minkoff bum bag. And again, I've probably not mentioned it because it's not one that I thought was a very significant purchase. Certainly in terms of selling it, it's not like I was hoping to fetch a lot for it. And to be honest, if it wasn't of the couple of hundred mark, I would just give it away. It's not often that I will want or elect to use a bum bag over a crossbody bag, for example. It's only really festivals that it makes sense to have a bum bag for, which is why it was great at Coachella, but also because it was another black bag in my collection. I have a lot of black bags, just black everything really. With the two bags that I've just mentioned, 
I have no regrets because that is something that I'm always worried about, especially if it's just sold. I have a quick moment of thinking, do you want to just refund that? But I'm pleased to say those items and the other items that I have sold already, I haven't had regrets on. But the two other bags I'm selling are ones that mm, I could be swayed on. And so the first one I'll talk about is actually, surprise, from Chanel. It's my Chanel boy bag in the new medium size, the patent leather one. And I have a love-hate relationship with this bag. And to be honest, I think a lot of people will be surprised that I'm listing this one because it was my first ever Chanel bag that I bought myself. And to be honest, it has been my workhorse bag. I've used it in rain and shine. I've climbed the Grand Canyon with it. I've done some stupid ass things with it, but I've made so many memories with it. I've had also equally with those good times, a few gripes with it, namely the fact that my hair catches in it and things like that and how big it is and the patent leather is not one that I think long term I get on with all that well. So that's why it's been kind of weighing on me whether I should sell it or not, especially because I have so many other Chanel bags. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to part with it when the time comes. But we will see, I will keep you posted on that one and you can let me know in the comments below if you think it's a good idea or not. The second bag that I will be selling, however, is one that I'm a lot more resolute on. To be honest, it was an impulse purchase at the time that I bought it many years ago. Thankfully, it stuck with me for the longest time and I managed to use it a great deal. And this bag is none other than the Chloe Faye bag. Who remembers how lit all of the Chloe Faye bags were five years six years ago and of course it leaves the same way that it comes in <laughs> with a bang nowadays you don't really see those bags on the street not that that should be a barometer of whether you should buy a bag or not obviously you want to buy it because you want it but certainly all those years ago i was quite impressionable when it came to adding things to my collection i did do a few impulse purchases that was actually one of them and it wasn't a cheap impulse purchase either because even at the time i think i paid 1200 or something for it for an impulse purchase i just flat out shouldn't have made that especially when i could have channeled back in that time i could have channeled that money towards a chanel bag or something which i would have loved a lot more and used a lot more right because nowadays i don't think those fay bags are selling for even half the price that i paid for it so i will be making a loss on it this one is completely leather it's in this beautiful mock croc print as well it's in the most beautiful burgundy red color it's been with me around the world it packs super super flat so i can't complain in that sense it's also a workhorse bag and it has been my work bag for the longest time because of how much it fits with the accordion um, storage inside right but i think for the time being especially with the bags that i already have and the practicality reason as well, because it's quite bulky and doesn't really go that much with my outfits, especially because of the color. I don't wear a lot of stuff that goes with that kind of red and that kind of casual style. It makes sense for me to let that one go. Now moving on from handbags into shoes, of which I also have an overabundance of, if you've seen my designer shoe collection video. So I have managed to sell two pairs of shoes that I'm, I've pretty much not ever worn. The first one being the um, Fenty Puma collaboration, which was like the sneaker heels. And I even bought that one twice because I'd worn one pair through the ground, to be honest, sold it, and then bought a fresh new pair, which I never worn even once. I don't know what I was thinking back in the day, but I just thought, oh my God, these look so pretty. I just have to have them in the limited edition, they're Rihanna. Little did I know I would never wear them, <laughs> only around the house, I think, maybe once or twice, but they've never touched the ground outside, so they were immaculate. So I'm glad I've shifted those, because to be honest, the ways to style it were very, very specific. You had to wear only like pink outfits or neutral outfits, Fits and they'd be kind of like sporty style and to be honest the stiletto when are we going to wear the stiletto in london i learn my lessons i'm not going to get anything like that again and it doesn't make sense for me to keep something like that either so i'm glad i sold that one quite quickly as well and then the other pair that i sold were surprisingly a purchase that i'd made only in the last year and a half really and that was the prada espadrilles and it was in this like cloth like nude cloth style i actually bought that from mr village so thankfully i bought it at a discount but still 
even if you buy something at a discount and you don't wear it, it's still a loss of money. It was quite uncomfortable though. And then I saw other nice wedge espadrilles or sandals that I would wear a lot more. I even bought an Hermes one recently and that one kind of seems a bit similar to me, um, but a lot more comfortable than the Prada ones. So it made sense for me to shift those. I think I've sold other things that are maybe not as significant in terms of luxury items, but I have listed a lot more that are, you know, impractical heel heights or you know very bold colorways those shoes are a lot harder to sell just purely because they go on the ground as opposed to handbags which people usually keep quite clean and they don't touch the floor at least i put, don't put my handbags on the floor I put them on a chair because who puts three thousand pounds on the floor next up i'm going to be talking quickly about ready to wear i am putting up on sale a lot of my ready to wear that are very, very seasonal or ones that I really don't have occasions to wear at this current moment in time. And as a magpie who loves something that is shiny, sparkly, limited edition and collaboration, over the past few years, I've just accumulated so much stuff that I thought was rare or hard to find. And I wanted to be that special snowflake that only I had these items. I've just got so many collaboration items in, in particular, like the H&M Balmain ones or the H&M uh, Moschino ones. I just don't wear and people know exactly what collection it's from because they weren't like specific um, classic items. And then the final category of items I will be selling are just accessories. So whether that be costume jewelry or potentially, you know, some other, um, maybe like winter accessories, you know, scarves and things. I think it's probably leaning towards more of the costume jewelry, specifically bracelets and necklaces because earrings, I'm just not gonna sell at all because of the hygiene factor. And now that we've gotten the why and the what I'm selling out of the way, I'll end this video by talking a little bit about the new buying rules that I have for any new luxury that's going to make its way into my wardrobe in the future. Let's start off with some general ones and then I will talk about specific ones in the different categories that I've even just previously mentioned. So the first rule that I'm going to be applying is when I buy something new, it's not to replace something that I already had but sold. So let's say I sell a purple coat. I'm not gonna then buy a purple coat so that looks quite similar to that one. It's gonna be something that I end up losing a lot more money on in the long term, especially having then sold the item and then also buying an item that is essentially the same, but I'll pay more for it because of inflation and just price increases, things like that. So the item that I buy new has to be drastically different to the item that I've sold, especially also if it's in the same category. So, you know, it doesn't have to be a purple coat, it could be a blue coat, but if it's in even the same style, probably would veer away from it since I've sold that particular style. Now, the next rule that I will be applying is one that I've historically found very hard, but I'm making great progress on it, I'd like to think. And that is avoiding buying items that are rare collaborations or limited edition just for the sake of it being rare collaborations and limited edition. Now I'm thinking a lot about the H&M collaborations. I'm thinking even about luxury collaborations like the, uh, for example, nowadays you've got the Fendi skims and things, a lot of gimmicky stuff at the moment, which I personally feel, as a side note, cheapens the original luxury brands themselves. So I'm no longer gonna be sucked into all of that marketing, all of the buzz that is artificially created, might I add, to promote these items, because clearly I also don't have the occasions to wear all these flashy items. And also because people know that they're from these certain collaborations or from the certain collection, it's really easy to date it back. And so therefore I feel like after that season is done, that trend is done, people will know where that item came from. And if, if you are someone that follows trends, you're not gonna to wanna to wear that anymore. It's something that, I'm making progress on nowadays, especially because there are so many more collaborations. I don't know if you've noticed, but I certainly have. And I'm exercising restraint. Next up, we have a financially savvy rule, which is one that I'd like to think I've stuck quite close to over the years, but I'm re-emphasizing it more, especially if I've then sold stuff. And that is all about buying items that are only on like a promotion or a discount or some sort of loyalty program. Even buying discount is expensive, but if you buy something full price and you don't get any kind of loyalty for it or promotion for it, and then you end up not wearing the item, it's even more of a waste of money. So unless it's something incredibly special or something that doesn't go on promotion, like a luxury timepiece, they don't really go on promotions, but at least you could get loyalty on it, right? You could buy it in Harrods or something or another big department store online and get cash back. Those are the kinds of uh, ways um, that I will be buying items going forward. I've stuck quite closely to it, I'm pleased to say, and I will continue to do that. Next up, one that is quite intuitive, but I think a lot of people overlook this one, and that is buying items that are quality. 
and this one seems obvious but I think it's quite staggering the amount we will spend for items that are really not worth the money. I mean, obviously luxury by nature is marked up and overpriced, but I guess, especially nowadays with crazy price increases and stuff and the quality decreasing, then now it's more important than ever to only buy items that are worth that price tag. As much as it is important for a lot of us out there to have that luxury brand emblazoned on something, it's more important for me nowadays, with my collection being as vast as it is, that you know quality is the focal point here. Now for a buying rule that I think will be of no surprise, and that is about avoiding impulse purchases. It's not an excuse to be like, oh, I just really love it, or oh, you know, it's limited, or you know, all the factors that I've mentioned before it's not a good excuse to spend that amount of money on something that is on a whim. And then the final buying rule that I will be adopting is that of reviewing my wardrobe and what I will sell every quarter or half a year. It helps for like a, not just peace of mind, but also safety as well to know exactly what I have and know if anything also goes missing, you know? It ties in quite nicely with everything else because by having this mental catalog of stuff, I'll be able to know what should come in, what needs to go out, and those kind of things, and just basically do an audit of how everything is looking. Now, those general rules that I've just listed here obviously can be applied to all of the luxury items that I will be looking at in the future, though there are some specifics for various categories of items that I will also be adopting in addition. So I'll start with handbags because Again, handbags are the big high ticket items that I love a lot. With the handbags, I'm only gonna be focusing on the top tier designer brands. I find that LV, Chanel, or even Hermes in the future, it's not one that I like in terms of their Birkins, Kennedys and stuff like that. But in the future, even if it's for like a more investment piece or something like hand down, those tend to do the best. And that is objective reality, especially when I consider the other bags I'm, I've sold or been selling they don't get as much money back as these ones fetch. So I will be focusing my efforts probably more on the Chanel side, if anything. Obviously, let's see about the uh, price increases and the quality decreases, but I will be buying mostly from those brands. And then following on nicely from that reason, I will be focusing my attentions on classic bags or classic silhouettes. Um, not necessarily, you know, the classic fixtures in a fashion house. You know, I might look at the seasonal styles, but not necessarily super seasonal designs or materials and things like that. Um, I wanna be looking at silhouettes, which will hopefully have longevity for the indefinite future. That might mean items that are specifically only leather as well, or even exotics, because those seem to be the most classic uh, styles and materials and the most hard wearing as well. And even from, like I mentioned before, the selling of my D&G bag or even listing the Chloe Faye bag, clearly those kind of more seasonal or trendy styles don't work out for me. And it's quite natural, I guess, also for a lot of people to feel the same way. And that being reflected also in the, in the resale, right? Now moving on to ready to wear, and it's not necessarily a rule that I have per se, more of like a guidance of what I or a focus area of what I should be buying. And that is around looking more towards uh, classic coats and jackets, as opposed to things like dresses and, you know, logo t-shirts, which are a little bit more specific in their wear. And, you know, dresses, you can only really wear for what, like a, like a formal event or wedding event or something like that. And then anything outside of that, you could probably get for a lot lower end. You don't need to buy luxury. And I have so many flashy dresses that are designer. Specifically, I'm thinking a lot of floral dresses as well, which I really don't need more of. I'll be focusing more towards classic items that also won't be so dependent on my dress size, my specific dress size. So I'm thinking more coats, and jackets and blazers that I think will be able to transcend just, you know, like a tight fitting dress, which I'll probably only be able to wear for the next, you know, five to 10 years. My dress size might change and even me going to the gym has an impact on what I'm able to fit in. And so I wanna focus on items that are a bit more bulky, but also be something that I can wear for many decades to come. And then the final category of luxury items that I have, I guess, more guidance on, as opposed to a specific rule on, is that of accessories. So for jewelry, I'm thinking to just focus purely on fine jewelry costume. I think I have a lot of, so unless it's very, very special, I think I've put enough money towards costume jewelry, not only for the sheer quantity, but also the quality isn't as great as it used to be, to be honest. As I make 
more funds available from the things that I sell. I want to channel that money into not just the more important life ventures that I want to put towards and um, invest in, but it's also towards items that could be heirlooms. And I'm really thinking the luxury timepieces, those are big investments and those will potentially appreciate in the future. So that's something that I'm going to be focusing a lot more towards. So anything else is really just distraction from an accessories point of view. And then, you know, in terms of other accessories, whether that be, you know, scarves or hats, sunglasses, things like that, I may look at them because those I don't have so much of, but if I've gotten, you know, two designer scarves or something, do I really need a third or fourth or fifth? Probably not. So that was everything that I wanted to cover in today's video. It seemed hella long. It was a pretty long explanation to be honest but hopefully it was informative of sorts let me know down in the comments below if you're going to be selling anything from your luxury collection i want to thank you guys as usual for watching and i will catch you in my next one